video will focus on the death of Edgar Allan Poe and whether he was a victim of voting fraud in Baltimore in 1849. Edgar Allan Poe, the novelist and journalist, is categorized today by his love of terror and the macabre. But Poe's life wasn't entirely tragic. He enjoyed many happy moments with his wife, Virginia Eliza Clem Poe. He also was beloved by his aunt, Maria Clem Poe. Her love for him helped create various Poe museums around the United States today. Poe's life was blighted by the death from tuberculosis of his mother and alcoholism. But in 1849, Poe's life was looking up. Although he had experienced the death of his beloved wife, he had become reacquainted with and engaged to his childhood sweetheart, Sarah Elmira, Elmira Royster. On September 27, 1849, he left his home in New York City to arrange a possible publishing gig in Philadelphia, but he never made it there. Poe was very familiar with Philly and lived on Third Street for years with his wife. You can still see his home on Third Street today. He was very familiar with the traveling route from New York City to Philly. Despite this, no one heard from Poe for a week. But on October 3rd, he was found in his hometown of Baltimore, lying unconscious in a gutter next to a polling location on Election Day. He was wearing torn, ill-fitting clothing, much too big for him, and a peculiar straw hat, which was a notably different aesthetic from his usually dark, reserved, and tailored style. The clothing note is important here because clothing was very expensive for Americans in the 1840s. Poe was poor. There was no privilege here. He did not have multiple coats. I don't think he even had multiple shirts. In photographs of him, you can see the same style he wore over and over, and it might do, be due to his own stylistic preferences or due to the fact that he only had a certain number of clothing. So the fact that Poe was found with clothing not his own is an important one. Joseph Walker, a writer at the Baltimore Sun, recognized Poe and contacted his relatives, including his aunt. Walker and friends took Poe to Washington Medical College, where he seemed trapped in a hallucinatory haze, unable to communicate or answer questions. His only verbal expression was muttering the name Reynolds over and over. No one has ever conclusively determined who or what Reynolds was or what they might have to do with Poe's disappearance. Poe was in a hallucinatory haze for four days. Poe's aunt, Maria Poe Clem, was extremely concerned about this and, and made inquiries after his death. Poe um, was in the Washington Medical Hospital, and there are reports that he was shouting Reynolds on his deathbed, but I believe he was calling it. And so um, this is something that his aunt inquired about and one of Poe's contemporaries, James A. Harrison, wrote a letter to her about it. He put forth the theory that Reynolds was Jeremiah N. Reynolds. And he wrote the address on the subject of a surveying and exploring expedition to the Pacific Ocean and the South Seas, which may have given Poe ideas for his novel, the narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket. Reynolds' article was published in the Southern Literary Messenger in January 1837, and this was a proposal for exploring the Pacific and South Seas for the benefit of whale fishing. Under the header of this article is the note, Critical Notes by Edgar A. Poe, editor. Edgar was working for the Southern Literary Messenger at the time, so he would have been in communication with Reynolds, and maybe this is the Reynolds. This theory was furthered by Arthur Hobson Quinn in his biography, Edgar Allan Poe, A Critical Biography. 
On Saturday night, Poe began to yell loudly for Reynolds. Perhaps to his dim and tortured brain, he seemed to be on the brink of a great descending circle, sweeping down like the phantom ship in the manuscript found in a bottle, into darkness and distance. In that first published story, Poe had written, It is evident we are hurrying onward to some exciting knowledge, some never-to-be-imparted secret whose attainment is destruction. Perhaps this current leads to the South Pole itself. It would have been natural enough for Poe's favorite theme, the terror of the opening chasm, to lead his thoughts to that other story, Arthur Gordon Pym, and from that to Jeremiah Reynolds, projector of the voyages to the South Seas, whose very language Poe had used in his tale. He could easily have known Reynolds, but what led to his wild cries must still remain uncertain. Poe certainly did know Reynolds, there was a note from Poe in 1842, which was a bankruptcy petition to J.N. Reynolds. Reynolds had given $10 to Poe, and Poe owed him money when he died. And so maybe Reynolds was upset about this death, and when he saw Poe was going to be in Baltimore or Poe was traveling to Philly, decided to make some trouble. Another example of a Reynolds is a gentleman in Baltimore who was a carpenter serving at the fourth ward polls as election judge, Henry R. Reynolds. Um, this is something that ties into a cooping theory of Poe's death. And this theory involves ambassadors for po political figures going about town and snatching victims who they would force feed alcohol strip of and replace their own clothes and send them to the polls to force them to stuff ballots for their preferred political candidate. You may be shocked hearing about this, but voter fraud has been common in American elections for centuries. Uh, cooping gangs were paid by various political operatives in all of the major cities on the East Coast. Baltimore had cooping gangs, Philly had cooping gangs, Boston had cooping gangs, and this was something that really came into force in the 1800s, decades before Poe's death. So Poe would have been aware of cooping gangs and um, their preference for supplying their victims with alcohol was common. Poe struggled with alcohol his entire life. Alcohol is a depressant, and unfortunately, he had a very low tolerance, so there are remembrances where he would get drunk on just one glass of wine. The cooping gangs feeding him um, heavy liquors would have had a disastrous effect. Could it be that this was the Henry Reynolds Poe was calling out, and he was attempting to identify his killer. There's also an interesting detail that the Poe Museum in R Richmond uncovered, and they are such a great resource for all things Poe. I encourage you to check out their website. It is amazing. Um, as newspapers of that day record, at Ryan's Fourth Ward pol polls in Gunners Hall in Baltimore on Election Day, one of the three presiding judges was a man who bore the name of Henry R. Reynolds. Present in the same room as Poe on October 3rd, only days before he began in his delirium to call out the name, was an actual flesh and blood Reynolds. So maybe this judge is also involved. Again, we have more credence to the cooping theory. Um, the The... Accounts of Poe calling out Reynolds were not helped by embellishment after his death. Moran was one of the writers who was able to give a first-hand account of Poe in his hallucinations, but this became revised over time. This is something where... Um, he Moran in, included Reynolds in his 1849 
version, but then he took him out by 1875, and then by 1885 there is no mention of Reynolds. So was Reynolds just this made-up detail by Moran? I don't know. I don't think so, because I think it would have been debunked by Poe's other friends, especially from the Baltimore Sun after his death. Uh, Reynolds was featured as the main antagonist in James McTighe's film, The Raven, and so it's interesting that we see this Reynolds including, you know, the Reynolds name <laughs> exists in the Poe legend even after Poe's death. What Poe died of was phrenitis or swelling of the brain, which in 1849 was used as a catch-all diagnosis and sometimes was used as a code for alcohol-related deaths. It is possible that alcoholism killed Poe either by overdose or the shock of going cold turkey if he didn't drink at all during this trip, which can result in seizures, and perhaps he seized and then fell into the gutter and hit his head. Um, the... Theory, there's another theory that Poe was suffering from a brain tumor, which could have led him to do things he normally wouldn't have done and eventually manifested as the hallucina hallucinations he experienced in the hospital. This theory is supported by testimony from 1875 when his unmarked grave was exhumed by his alma mater, the University of Virginia, to give the famous poet a more appropriate burial. But in true Poe fashion, the coffin broke and Poe's skull disconnected from his body. Onlookers reported that his brain rattled around inside the skull just like a lump of mud. However, the human brain, due to its soft tissue, is usually one of the first parts of the body to decompose, leading later forensic pathologists to theorize that the sound heard was not his brain, but the calcified remains of a brain tumor which is much more likely to have survived 20 years after his death than the brain. I think that the cooping theory is a very strong one. Cooping comes from the term cooped up, where the victims were first cooped up in an undisclosed location where they were beaten, drugged, forced to drink to render them compliant. It was also common practice at the time to offer voters a celebratory shot of liquor in lieu of today's stickers. So if Poe was being forced to return to the polling location again and again and drinking again and again, that might have accounted for his demise. Despite Extensive investigations by numerous historians over the years, we still don't know all of the facts behind Poe's death. It's nice to think that Poe would have been happy to leave us with this one final mystery.